Hello, good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be here today, and I would like to take you on a journey. A journey not into space, but into a future where the challenge of food security has been resolved in Africa. Inspired by recent advancements in technology, as well as policies that are strategic and have made headway in terms of delivering solutions, I'd like for you to imagine a future where every farmer in Africa has access to real-time precise information about their crop fields, soil conditions, and weather. A world where through, even though climate extremes are still on the horizon, food insecurity is a distant memory, thanks to the eyes that we place in the sky. And this is not just science fiction. This is the future that we are actively building together. So what does space have to do with it? First, to take you on a journey at the beginning, um, this is 2015. I'm standing in Rupa County in Karamoja, where I did my PhD research. It's the peak of the growing season. And as you can see, the field that I'm supposedly mapping at that point is the best that it can be before the harvest. Imagine now we're in 2050 and we're mid headway. All the methods that we've invested in, all the technology, all the satellites that have been launched have been um, made accessible in a way that is useful for farmer, Nakiro in this case. She receives a voice message on her phone that is providing information about the upcoming season. Of course, she'd like to know more. And the prompt continues that the forecasts show a 70% probability of severe drought conditions and a tropical cyclone later in the season. This is not completely made up. This is a place where we have one extreme following another. So you can have floods followed by uh, a, an extensive, really long dry spell. And so the prompt continues to say that there is available information that the government uh, is providing. She goes on to ask, what about my insurance that I have? Would it be able to cover me if I do not plant? In addition, she would like to know what the prices in the region and projected for the next few months will be, given that she will need to be able to feed her family without her produce. The prompt continues and provides information about government programs. You can access more information that is toll free. You can reach out to your extension uh, agent who will provide a little bit more uh, uh, information about what's locally available. In addition, uh, that her insurance that she has, has a clause that prevented planting, meaning that since the risks are so high, she doesn't need to plant in order for her to be paid out, saving the little resources that she has so she can feed her family going forward. The question is, how do we get here? How do we get to be able to provide Nakiru with this information in a timely way, accessible way, in a medium, a text message in her local language that she understands and is able to take action. And she relies and depends and understands that this information is valid and accurate for her region. There's a lot of technology involved that needs to be advanced that we are already working to advance. We need better earth observing satellites. We need better, more sophisticated, locally, locally contextually appropriate methods to be able to deliver that kind of insight. We need to aggregate and integrate data from different sources. We need to understand the food system, the agriculture food system, the entire agriculture supply chain, including who provides insurance when for what, so that uh, Nakiru can actually have that information. Her decision is difficult, but she goes ahead and decides to leave her field unplanted, sparing her precious seeds and labor for a more promising time. This is the future that we want to build. She has access to food and income necessary to sustain her family through to the next season. What we're doing at NASA Harvest is trying to build user-centric systems that are incrementally being improved as data become available as um, analytics and methods for improving productivity become available. We want to build methods that are responsive to what the needs are for a particular context. So we want to come from broad scale agriculture monitoring to be able to deliver insights that can be delivered in a medium like that text message or radio program that is accessible to a farmer like Nakiru. In order to get there, obviously we need to be able to 
further advance what we're doing uh, in addition to being able to deliver it for programs that are critical, to be able to deliver it for early warning, for monitoring and assessment, predicting yield shortfalls, facilitating decision-making, delivering information into the most remote regions, as well as providing financial support for farmers. So the data and information that we have access to can enable delivery of um, these types of uh, programs. And in order for it to work really well, local investments in space and AI research for social benefit is absolutely critical. We need policies to improve data sharing, and at the same time, ensuring that, that as the data are being shared and developed or uh, collected, that they will benefit the farmers from which, in most cases, are the source of this data. We need to build local expertise in order to develop models or pathways that make sure the data are relevant for a particular context. You need to involve local organizations in the development of the technology. And while we're making significant progress and impacting and decision-making, improving analytics and delivering information for food balance sheets, for example, it is important to delve deeper into addressing the challenges that are immediate. At the same time, thinking about future challenges that we might face if technology continues to be developed for not the benefit of the smallholder, but for the benefit of our profit. So, I want to end on that point, and I'm looking forward to discussions today.